Okay, I am going to teach you how to start crocheting. So after you've got your first hook and your first yarn that you've picked, uh, you need to know how to make a basic swatch. So you'll need to know a couple different stitches. You'll need to know chain and single crochet. Um, and to start chaining, you will need to first know how to make a slip knot. Slip knots are very easy. You just take the yarn like this, wrap it around two fingers, and then grab the yarn where they meet together right there. Turn your hand and insert your thumb into that loop you just made around those two fingers. And then grab the working strand. And then at the same time, you're going to pull that working strand through the loop and this end strand at the same time. And pulling it at the same time makes your slip knot. So you've got a nice loop here. So if the way a slip knot works is that if you were just to pull these two ends, the slip knot will just disappear. It'll just slip out. So you insert your hook into the loop and then pull it snug on there. And that's how you start chaining. And then uh, you're likely not going to know exactly how to hold everything at the same time. So I'll show you how I hold the yarn before you start working. I usually take my pinky and grab the yarn like that and then turn my hand like this and then put the yarn over my index finger. So it's wrapped around my pinky, it's underneath the next two fingers and then on top of my index finger. And that's how I hold everything. So I usually keep tension here with this hand and then holding the hook and the end or the project or wherever I'm at on it like this. So it's very important to like learn how to hold everything. You're likely going to just feel you're like gripping everything really tightly because then that's okay because you're new at it. It'll take some time to practice, but this is what you should practice. Practice holding it and practice chaining for as long as it takes for your hands to feel more comfortable. So to make a simple chain, all you have to do is yarn over once. So to yarn over, you just wrap the yarn over, just like that. Just wrap it over and then turn your hook so that way it's grabbing onto that yarn. See how it's got a hold of it? So that way when you pull it through, you're going to want to keep pulling tightly on the end of the yarn too, so that way you can pull the hook through the loop. And you've made one chain. So make another one, you just yarn over again, just like that. Turn your hook and pull it through. And just do that over and over again. I think I did something like 200 chains or something at first. Um, do it until, like I said, like your stitches are even and your hands are comfortable. Don't just do like 10 and, and get the hang of it, or you think you have the hang of it, because this is the most important part, is just learning how to hold everything at the same time. So do that. I would do it at least a couple hundred times. I don't know. It's up to you. Um, but once you like start your first little swatch, I would do like at least 10. So how many do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9. That's good enough. So since we've got 9 chains, we're going to actually have 8 single crochets. So when you are working on top of a chain row like this, your last chain counts as your turning chain because we're going to work back along all of these chains and then back and forth. So there'll always be the number of uh, stitches in the middle and the end chain always counts as the turning chain. It doesn't actually count as in the stitch count. Okay, so to do a single crochet, your first one, you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. So what that means is the first one is right here. That's the first chain from the hook. The second one is right here. Okay. So you put your, your hook into that first stitch, just like that. <coughs> and then yarn over, just like you did with the chain. Turn it and pull it through. Except now you've got two loops on the hook. So it means you need to finish your single crochet. Yarn over again, turn and pull it through both loops on the hook. And that was your first single crochet. 
So keep going until you've gone all the way across. So we've done one so far. The next one is right here. Yarn over, turn, pull it through. You should have two loops on your hook. Yarn over, turn, and pull through both loops. I'll go as slow as slow as I can for you. So we're gonna have eight. Make sure you keep count because uh, it can definitely be hard to see where your next stitch is, or if you've uh, sometimes you'll accidentally put two stitches in one loop when you're first starting. So make sure uh, you're counting when you do it. Okay, and then one more. There you go. So that is your first row of chain and then single crochet. So, but remember you're gonna need a turning chain in order to go onto your next row. So you'll do one chain, so yarn over, turn over your hook and pull it through, one chain, that's your turning chain. So then you have to turn the project like this, so you're seeing this back side now, and you're going to work this way. So you're always working to the left, if you're right-handed. Sorry, right, left-handed friends. <laughs> if you're right-handed, this is what you're doing. Um, so now you're going to work eight single crochets again and you're going to skip the first chain, the one that you just made, because that's your turning chain. So that's that itty bitty one right there. Your first single crochet is right here. Go underneath both loops and then yarn over, turn your hook, pull through. You got two loops on your hook, so you yarn over again and pull it through both loops. So the trickiest part about when you're learning is just knowing where to, where your stitches are and where to insert your hook. So you'll, that's the point of practicing this is that way you get used to what the stitches look like as you make them. So when you went into the chains, you only went into one, one side of the chain, just one loop. When you go under the single crochets, you go under both. And like I said, I made something about this size, but I made it the length of a scarf, almost. Uh, that was just me practicing. I didn't have any project or anything. I was just practicing my single crochets. And I think I did that for like a day. And then it's just a little bit of practice after that, but that's what it took for me to get used to holding the hook. Um, all right, so here's a good point. Like at the end of your your second row, it can be hard to tell where the last stitch is, or like if it's the turning chain. Uh, so this is where it comes in handy to count your stitches. So that way you know, oh, I still have one left, and then you have to try to find it. So we've only done one, two, three, four, five, six. We've done seven. See how you can see seven sets of little V's on top? That means we're missing one. So the last one. See that there's the old V's? They're kind of turned because they're kind of being pulled from the turning chain. So it does look like they're not supposed to be uh, worked into, but that is your last stitch. And it's very easy to miss it. And that's why a lot of uh, beginner's projects are, are kind of crooked and the rows are different sizes and stuff. It, you just have to count. And if you miss a stitch, it's not a big deal. This isn't a major project. You're just practicing stitches. So if it's all wobbly in different sizes and stuff, it's okay. You're, you're learning. 
So we'll do our last single crochet. So now we should have eight sets of V's on top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then you have to make your turning chain again. So yarn over, turn, and pull through. Turning chain, and then turn your project over again. And then repeat this process as many times as, as it takes. I would, what I would do is if you don't want uh, a really big like chunk of yarn that you've worked with, if you don't want to make a scarf kind of like I did, um, I would recommend making like little swat, like swatch squares. So make this until you have a square shape and then you can either cut the yarn or if you want to save it, um, all you have to do to unravel your yarn is just start pulling it and it will just come neatly out. And that way you don't have to waste any yarn or anything. Okay, so once you've got your little swatch, um, like I said, you can either like totally unravel it or you can cut it and keep it if you want <laughs> as a little memento. I kind of wish that I had saved my first little uh, project, but I actually ended up using that yarn um, for other projects that went into a bunch of different things. So um, yeah, be proud of your little your little square shape. If if yours isn't perfectly straight like this, um, if it kind of gets more narrow, that obviously means you are missing stitches. You're probably missing the, the ends. So go back and practice that. Uh, if it's getting wider, that means you're adding stitches somewhere. So uh, my, my suggestion is just to um, keep it, you know, relatively small. I would say like 10 stitches, you know, across would be a good place to be because you don't want to do too many. Um, but you don't want to do too few because too few is going to just, uh, it might be a little bit harder to see and uh, won't give you the practice you need. But I would say like start with 10 across and just see where you get with that. Um, but yeah, let me know how it goes. Thanks guys.